The Philippines' banking landscape has won awards after awards. Some banks have been named as some of the best banks in the world. Some have been recognized with corporate excellence. But of course, some have gained nothing at all. Though it is clear to see just how important the Philippines' banking institutions have become. The largest bank, also known as Banco de Oro, or BDO, has grown so big that it now has more than 4 trillion pesos in total assets, which is approximately 80 billion US dollars. Its reach spreads across Asia, North America, Europe, and even the Middle East. Yet, BDO isn't just the sole bank in the country. The Philippines boasts banks such as the Bank of Philippine Islands, or BPI, Metropolitan Bank, China Banking Corporation, and so much more. According to the latest Banco Central of Philippines report, the banking sector's total assets reached over 23 trillion pesos, or over 460 billion US dollars, which is indeed a massive figure. But one of the things we want to understand in today's video is just how big is it really? How significant is BDO in the world of banking institutions? Is BDO big enough to go against the major leagues of Asian financial businesses? Or is the Philippines' banking system with nearly half a trillion dollars in assets actually formidable? Well, let us first understand this by finding out who are the largest banks and then compare it to neighboring countries. Let's start with the basics. How many banks are there in the Philippines and just how big are they? So as of the latest reports, the Philippines has around 45 big banks, 43 thrift banks, and 395 rural and cooperative banks under the BSP supervision. Now, the largest of all, of course, is BDO. As we noted earlier, the company has about 4 trillion pesos, or 80 billion US dollars in total assets. Revenue-wise, it has about 240 billion pesos and 57 billion pesos in net income. But what makes BDO actually important and massive isn't really because it has the most assets, but rather how it's owned by none other than the same family who owns the SM Group. On top of that, throughout its lifetime, BDO has also acquired big and small banking institutions such as RB Pandi Banking Business, Banco Santander Philippines, and so on. Bank of the Philippine Islands, on the other hand, boasts over 2.7 trillion pesos in total assets and a revenue of over 165 billion pesos. BPI is also known as the second largest bank in the country. Following BPI, we have Metro Bank. The company has about 2.9 trillion pesos in total assets and a revenue of over 125 billion pesos. Now, we won't go into detail for every single major bank in the Philippines, as there's so much. However, these three are presently significant players in the country, each boasting billions of dollars of assets and revenues, and they have operations all across the world. Now, to understand whether Philippine banks are massive, we must understand its neighboring countries of similar size. To compare, and for entertainment purposes, we will see just how big some of Southeast Asia's largest banks are and compare it to the Philippines. The first country that we can immediately compare to the Philippines is Malaysia, a relatively smaller country but similar GDP sizes. Malaysia boasts some of the largest banks in Southeast Asia simply because it has a built-up financial system. The country's number one, Malayan Banking Berhad, boasts a significant size. The company has about 49 billion Malaysian ringgit in revenues, or about 11.5 billion US dollars, which is far more significant than that of BDO, which only has about 4.8 billion dollars. Asset-wise, Malayan banking has 947 billion Malaysian ringgit, or 227 billion US dollars which is, again, far more than BDO's total asset, which sits at about $80 billion. But as we noted earlier, this is because Malaysia's Kuala Lumpur is regarded as one of the most sought-after financial centers around Asia. It is slowly evolving itself, even as some analysts point out to be the next Singaporean destination. Now, following Malaysia, we also have Thailand, a country of similar size. Bangkok Bank, which is the country's largest bank, has about 188 billion Thai baht of revenue and about 4.5 trillion Thai baht in total assets. 
or in US dollars, this is about $6 billion in revenue and $144 billion in total assets. Revenue-wise, it is not that far from BDO, but asset-wise, it is almost double than that of the Philippines' largest bank. Can we then infer that these two countries, Malaysia and Thailand, have stronger banks? Well, not likely. The comparison only sees the largest of each country and does not account for many, many factors. But it may shed light on the largest player for each respective country. Now, on a smaller note, Vietnam, which is the most identical to the Philippines in economic size, may be a better comparison. Vietnam's largest bank is known as Vietcom Bank, or VCB for short. VCB has about 109 trillion Vietnamese dong in revenue, or $4.6 billion. Its asset is about 1,704 trillion Vietnamese dong, or $73 billion. These are similar figures compared to BDO. And for curiosity's sake, let us also see how big Singapore and Indonesia's banks are, despite being of different status and size. The former being a financial center, and the latter having a ginormous population. First, Singapore is quite famous in this financial world. Their largest bank is known as the DBS Group, which produces more than 30 billion Singaporean dollars, or 22.5 billion US dollars. The company has 757 billion Singaporean dollars in total assets, or 570 billion US dollars. Quite huge, but normal, as Singapore is a financial center. Indonesia, on the other hand, has several big banks, but we will be using Bank Rakyat Indonesia, which is one of the largest in the country. Bank Rakyat has about 195 trillion Indonesian rupiah, or 13.4 billion US dollars in total revenue, and about 127 billion US dollars in total assets. Anyway, we can immediately see the huge differences from Philippine banks against foreign banks, and you, dear viewer, might come to a conclusion immediately that the Philippine banks are small in comparison. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, not yet at least, there are many factors here we need to discuss. Some just have a larger economy than the Philippines, and some have different intricacies within their financial industry. The Philippines, for instance, still struggles with an underbanked and unbanked population. Underbanked and unbanked typically just means that a significant portion of the population in the Philippines doesn't have access to traditional banking services, or uses them, but to a limited extent. Here's the data in 2021 from the Central Bank of the Philippines which shows that 36 billion Filipinos remain unbanked. That is a huge portion of the country's total population. Without a bank, these Filipinos will not be able to contribute to their financial industry's growth. However, here's the thing, they actually are, but slowly. They are slowly taking advantage of the banking institutions, and according to a central bank plan, 70% of the country's adult population will have at least a formal financial account by 2023. A good start, but still far from gathering every single adult in the Philippines. Some plans dictate the use of digital financial systems, such as Gcash or Maya, whereas others dictate that the rise of digital banks may help solve this issue. But regardless of where it takes us, what matters more is that this presents an opportunity. And once it does, Philippine banks can compete someday against these foreign banks in terms of their size. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.